got you through the process. So you feel like ripping up the whole stage. Yeah, well, because I was well, with, well, I, well, I, yeah, I'm if, with, bro, I'm with, I'm with your people. <laughs> you need to be doing this. Yeah, <laughs> you had the paper, and you was like, this is what you need to be focusing on. That bodybuilding goes alongside mind building, also. And that's what a lot of people don't see. Oh, he's with the program, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no. No, within five minutes, it was like, yeah, we'll have you on. Everything will be sorted out. Yeah, next week, just, and it was just that quick. And I was, just, I remember sitting there like. Is that how you get a sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do. I do like to break the ice and like, make them know, yeah, the, the, that this guy's here. He's come to, he has come to. to he's a serious Yeah, man. he's come and he's coming to do something. Here. We're all here for the same thing. Let's enjoy it. Let's ruffle some feathers and that's it. Today, honored, grateful to be with Jay Cohen, DJ Cohen in the studio. <laughs> finally, we finally, we finally, we made it. It's a long time. This is way overdue, it's isn't it? It's way overdue. It's I way like overdue. I should have been the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but let's <laughs> no, be no, real. No, no disrespect to anybody. But you were, you, technically, you're there from the start of the journey. You were at the start of your journey. They were like, pretty simultaneous, weren't they? They were yeah, pretty much. It was like, cool, is that what you're doing? This is what I'm doing. Do let's, it. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it together. <laughs> yeah. Literally, it's the beginning. How would you describe yourself? I like to give people the. <laughs> opportunity to describe themselves first of all i'm a loving father i pride myself on that yeah so i would say i'm a father first bodybuilder pretty much is everything how do you want to be known do you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's, that's that's i want right. to be uh, how do you want to be known the change the hope so to speak you know where coming from where i've come from the background from where i've come from there's not much belief so to speak there's not much obviously you can be who you want to be but there's not there wasn't that much opportunity. Where are you from? I'm from Nottingham. Yeah. I'm from a place called Radford. Mm. If you're from Nottingham, you'll know about Radford mm. pretty much so. As a lot of other cities do tend to know too, good or bad. There's not much opportunity to be great, so to speak, is what how I'd like to put it. You pretty much fall into what you fall into, depending on your circumstance, which kind of led me to making poor decisions looking back now i wouldn't change any decision personally because mm. it's as we were saying before we got it it's made me who i am today i believe there were lessons i had to learn to develop the mindset to develop the thick skin to develop all these qualities what i believe i now possess i definitely had to go through what i had to go through whether it caused me trauma or not mm. so i'd like to see myself as a bright light so to speak especially for people for where I've come from, you know, because it's, it's taken a lot to beat certain narratives, you know. At the beginning of this, of this journey for me, I literally had no direct direction. I knew what I wanted to be. I knew what I wanted to become bodybuilder. I knew that was going to be a great way to showcase who I am. From a young age, I've always been told, what a body you have. You're so strong, you're so big, you're so young. Do something with it. I played a lot of sport. Mm. Every sport, I more or less excelled at, but it never felt like how this does now. It did, it, you know what, to be fair with football, it did. Football was my first love. We're kind of going into the story now. Yeah, let's go, um, let's get into it. Football let's get into was it. my first love. That was probably the first steps of me taking something seriously, really. I was always very competitive. Never mm. liked to lose. I didn't like to be told anything. I was always in my head, as long as I believe I can be good at it, that's what's going to matter in the end. David Beckham could be telling me, you're never going to be good enough. Yeah. No, that's, that's not something I would take on board. That mm. I, all I'd take from that is, I, I will show you. So how long was you playing football? I seriously was playing football about eight to about... 16, mm. 17. Yeah, yeah. Got to Notts County. Yeah, I've yeah. become good at it. <laughs> yeah. Them ages though, 16, 17. Yeah, things changed. Circumstances changed. The demand for certain things become more dominant. Money, helping my mum. The game started to change a bit, you know. Mm. It wasn't so much just get up and have fun every day as mm. it is as a kid. It now started to become a, I can see failings within, mm. well, what I would have felt like were failings at the time in my life and mm. I felt like I could do something to make it better I must be able to help yeah. do you understand what I mean yeah, yeah, be, yeah. even being so young you're trying to like empower yourself through means that may not serve your long term high, yeah. h higher purpose they might not serve your long term higher they, purpose they, they didn't yeah. they didn't <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you know what? No, no, you, you, know what? It takes, you, have to, you have to be honest to yourself, in it. Yeah. Looking at, at the time, they did. Yeah. There was reason. There was yeah. substance. With a more established mindset, a more understanding of what's what. 
Mm. Them short term benefits, it, it, it didn't make sense. It's your past that leads you to who you are today. And you wouldn't have built certain attributes like having a, a thick skin, being able to cope in, in, in negative situations. In negative situations, yeah. yeah. I hear you still. What is bodybuilding? Uh, Obviously, the clue is kind of <laughs> clue is kind of in the well, name. Of course, but is, is it just like about being the biggest you can be. Can be bodybuilding goes alongside mind building, also, and that's what a lot of people don't see the psychological side of of bodybuilding. There's so many lessons to learn whilst and within. Simplifying it, you could say it's about eating and going to the gym and training and becoming better. Mm. But the people who are actually in it know it's a lot more than that it's not just a, a simple thing from the outside it can look like from like, the outside like, it can look very oh he's just getting big well, just, it's not a team sport it's not like football no it's not like football it's not like although, there's, no other, although there's no other team to cut you there go on people do say there isn't a team but I don't think there's a successful bodybuilder without a team right then I wouldn't say there isn't one that hasn't but mm. it's very rare that a bodybuilder's gone the distance without that but on the stage it's just you on the stage it is just you and then when you're in a gym it's, it's you you might have a gym partner yeah then you're and you're spending all these days and nights alone mm. is bodybuilding the most self-centered selfish egotistical sport that there is or is there some sort of higher purpose some greater path that's being chosen by all of this self-work honestly the answer lies somewhere in the middle only because, as you've said, a lot of the, the main bits of bodybuilding are done on your own, on stage, training. Nobody can eat your food for you. Nobody can make you get up and make the decisions that you have to make. So with that being said, it can be very selfish. It can be very egotistical in that regard. The outcomes outweigh the ego for me, really. Powers that you build within are transferable. It doesn't just become about bodybuilding. Like it becomes almost about being a better person. This is why I say bodybuilding. Like To me, it's not just about building muscle because it's enabled me to become a greater person mental health benefit knowledge the understanding and like i say that's transferable mm. you can look at it in any perspective the attributes what i'm talking about are usually necessary in everything mm. so it then becomes a greater calling there's obviously life after bodybuilding mm. and the skills and lessons i learned from this stay with me mm. and will enable me to continue to be great so on that note yeah the greatness note like if I was to start this podcast again, this is how I'd introduce this, the, the situation. I'd be like, boom, in the studio right now, Jay Cohen recently placed third in Britain at the PCA bodybuilding competition, which is self-proclaimed to be the UK's number one bodybuilding institution. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I say, right? You, have you got the medal? You got the trophy oh, yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's pull it out, man. Let's pull it out. Let them know. Yeah, so... I even got the number, the, the lucky number. Third in Britain. To me, this signifies... Obviously, it's third in Britain, you know, which is an outstanding accomplishment for my first, what I consider to be my first season competing as a bodybuilder obviously the I have competed I did compete last year I wouldn't class that as a season it was more or less my introduction the test run my test run mm. so now I've got through my first official season I did three competitions in my first competition which was the PCA universe I placed sixth sixth out of six competitors I thought yeah now I'm training I've put more in my understanding's better I've come second last time now it's time to go one step further but it was five steps backwards mm. <laughs> you know I walked off that stage literally feeling like I'd lost like I'd lost a fight like I'd lost a football match that lost feeling the hate feeling that I do not like to feel that yeah. as I said it's about perspectives I should have looked at it different but I'm glad I didn't because it drove me. It then become fuel to fire. What's that feeling like, that spark? You know what? There's not much better feelings for me than feeling that that spark of, you know you can do better. Like, so you're turning pain... Into power. Into power. Talk me through the, the process. Sort you through then. the process. So you feel like ripping up the whole stage. Yeah, well... Because I was well, with... Well, I, well I, yeah. I'm if, with, bro, I'm with, I'm with your people, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'll tell you how it's gone from the audience's <laughs> point of view. We're together, we're watching you, yeah. Yo... Jay looks like he wants to rip up that stage, you know. <laughs> You're meant to be smiling. Smiling. You're meant to receive the, yeah. Um, well, you know what, hopefully we can show uh, the, 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 clip. The, the clip of how yeah. professional I was, to be honest. I'll yeah. be open and sit here and say, that was very, 
unprofessional from me. But that's the feel. The feeling. That's, that, that's that's. Yeah. I can't help. I can't say I can't help because I could have helped. But that's the character. That's me. Yeah. Losing is is not something I ever find joy in. I don't find pride in it. I can't yeah. sit there and smile about yeah. losing. And that's how I was looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Like I've lost. Like so, so. When did the? How did you? The alchemy in it. How did you manage to? change them feelings into something that's productive well first of all i had to really take a step back came Beautiful. off stage i've obviously been cons comforted by everyone by yeah. you guys by my parents by random people in the crowd who were coming up to me and saying mate you looked phenomenal like you should be proud it's not as bad as as, as, it, as it feels you know because everyone can see how bad it feels even on stage as you said i wasn't smiling they've asked me for my favorite pose i was, didn't move an inch i just thought <laughs> How have I done all this to be to feel like this at the yeah. end? Like it almost yeah. felt like, yeah. you know, because even prior to that, I've been on holiday, two holidays prior to that, where I took my son. I still stuck to plan. I still made sure I got my steps in. I still made sure I trained. I still, I didn't miss a beat. Like I didn't miss a single beat. I was mm. in Dubai visiting Cheesecake Factory with my family. Mm one of my favorite restaurants in the whole world, watching them eat and knowing, yeah, I can't have none of this and I've got to stick to my plan. Mm. And it just felt like I did all that to still ultimately feel like this. So frustrating to me at the time to come off and think all the time I, I could have possibly spent with my son or time I could have possibly spent with family, time that I had to spend on my own because dealing with the, the feels of prep, the hardship of prep, which can mentally and physically t tear you down. Some people, some people don't make it through a prep, you know, they start it and don't even finish it. I had to weigh all these things up, obviously. I left the arena. I had a few talks with people. I had a talk with my mum. She more or less said to me, she said, how much do you enjoy this, son? How much do you enjoy this? And I was like, I love it, you know, mum. And she says, out of all the answers you could have gave me for you to tell me that you love it makes me know that you're gonna be great at it. And I was kind of puzzled because I thought, what, what, what does that mean? Like, mm. there's a lot of things I love. And she's like, and think about all the things that you love and how great them things are to you or how great them things are. Again, it was like a confused face. And I thought, she's saying something to me. But at the time, emotions, all the rest of it, it's like it wasn't correct, a correct time for me to receive that, even mm. though it was. So I went away, I walked, I took a walk with family friends we walked for about an hour and a half i didn't even eat this is post show by the way where mm. everyone's eating cookies and getting all their post show treats in. post shows like you've not been you've starved yourself for all of yeah, this time yeah i depleted myself yeah sorry yeah. for those who, who don't understand yeah. post show obviously prior to show i would have dieted 14 weeks yeah i think this this show was actually 20 weeks for me yeah so that's no off plan no treats, no sweets, which is all part of it for me. That's all mm. pretty normal to me. I know that sounds probably pretty damning to everyone yeah. else, but that's pretty normal for me. Mm. But I depleted myself for that long. And then you post can... show, I just thought, right, I'm not, I'm not going to eat. I don't feel yeah. like I want to eat. I need to go for a walk. A bit I depressed. To... Almost, almost. Down like, in the, down down in in the, the dumps. dumps I, yeah. thought, I need to walk and talk. Like I need mm. to really reflect on mm. this like reflect on what's actually happened reflect reflect mm. went for a walk reflected come back everything felt like it had changed mm. got my feedback from the show and mm. it was like hmm this is one of two options here obviously I either go away sulk mm. be upset about the placing like give up give up stack it all like, off this, this ain't correct like I've done all this it's a waste of time like or read the feedback I take on board what my mum said, which really is the highest of highest of things said to me. Mm. Anything my mum says, that's how I take it. And it's like, do I use that? Because I know what I'm capable of. It doesn't matter, which refers way back to what I said about football. Mm. It almost felt like them telling me sixth place is, yeah, you're not going to be good at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's sort of how I took it. Like, yeah. oh, they don't think I'm going to be good at it. There's doubt being created here now. I don't allow people to doubt me. Don't We're not having me. that. 
Yeah. You're not having that. You're it's not almost, having that. Yeah, it's almost... Yeah. <laughs> not having that. It comes across like yeah. a... Yeah, like an attitude thing, but... Yeah, no. Yeah, you have I'm to not, be, be stubborn. I'm, Yo, people, quickly just want to mention something that I know is going to be of extreme value to you. There's a whole plethora of products you can choose from on the Gravity Fitness website. They are made to survive an apocalypse. So imagine what they're going to do to your body and your physique. Gravity Fitness is for all levels of individuals and athletes. It's for people that are trying to get into calisthenics. They've even got these gymnastic rings. You can do body weight exercises and then you can add a little weight to it with the weighted vest, which is adjustable as well. Long story short, bad boy product. That's why I'm bringing it to you. I'm a believer in it. And I'm so grateful that they've partnered with this podcast to bring you 10% off all purchases. Now that is a game changer. I wish I had 10% off when I bought my first vest. I wish we had 10% off. So make sure you go check them out. Use the code ABS10 at checkout for 10% off. Now without further ado, let's get back into the content. But you know, even like this walk, right? So I'm trying to take, take the lessons from it because like you said, yeah, there's a lot of transferable situations and things that can be applied to other situations. So uh, you, when you're down in the dumps, sometimes you just need like a a walk to clear your head, do you know what I'm saying? Because how do we manage our emotions in this life? And how do we manage situations where we can be angry and pissed off and go from looking like you want to smash up the stage? But I know that you was not like that, do you know what I mean? But we knew that you were not happy, do you know what I mean? And um, going for a walk to clear your head yeah, so with that, loved ones. That's it. And reflection. It literally allowed me to separate my thoughts, literally. And I think that was something that I could honestly say it took me a long time to learn. Because it's not something I've probably done before. I probably would have allowed emotions to drive me, you know, which ultimately six times, seven times out of 10, usually leads to me not making the greatest decision. And you have to really look at things like that. Like every decision I make from now has to be a great decision. I can't continuously make poor decisions. Or mm. I'm not going to continuously have poor outcomes. Mm. It allowed me to clear my thoughts, separate them and understand them that these, some of these emotions are temporary anyway, mm -hmm. like feeling defeat, feeling down, not feeling great. These are temporary anyway. And ultimately there's people still stood there that still look at me as great, mm. regardless of what position I've just come. I could have come 12 out of 12 yeah, and yeah. people are still standing there supporting me yeah. on this journey, mm. wanting me to do well. What understanding am I, am I actually taking from this? Did um, I lose or did... Or, was that the next day? This was this was ultimately six months later. This competition, yeah, yeah. So yeah. This, this competition, what we're talking about now, is yeah. the universe. Mm. So that was like the start of the torch being burned. Yeah, yeah, literally. yeah. Literally, like I've got a point to prove it. Right. I have got a point to prove it. Yeah, yeah. I've got my yeah. support network. We're not having that. Not having that. There's people here who really believe in what I'm doing and what I've said, and I can't be standing there talking about one poor decision mm. not even a poor decision one poor outcome and it wasn't even a poor outcome mm, mm, you understand because, because you're holding we're holding ourselves to such high standards such, exactly and the standard I always like to hold myself to is the highest standard mm. like you have to it's important mm. it's not negotiable that's mm. not or it's what are you doing mm. what how are you how are you going about what you're doing mm. if you're not holding yourself yourself personally to the highest standard Standards, if you're not yeah. doing the best you know you can possibly do within that field then mm. What are you doing? You, you're more or less wasting your own time, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's important. Let's touch on that for a minute. That seems like something that I've definitely learned over the last couple of years and that like you're touching on as well. Like what's the importance of trying to be the best that you can be at that moment in time in any one particular field? Like there's no point in doing something Half-heartedly, no. Half-hearted. What, are you going to receive half-hearted outcomes? Uh, uh, you might as well have not. You might as well have not begun, not almost, begun. Is, is, is how I see it. There's no, mm. like, you've got to be sure, first of all, that that's what you want to do, of course. Like, of course you can test things out and think, oh, I, may, I might like this, I might not. But once you've made that decision and you're saying this is what you want to do, you have to do that to the best that you can possibly do it at that moment in time. And you must be doing things outside of that to also make your current situation better. And then once you make that situation better, you then become better naturally. It all kind of comes together. Do you understand what I mean? So how important is it? Probably the most important than 
holding yourself to high standards, I believe personally. It's not something that I sit here and say I knew straight away because I didn't, you know. At the start of this bodybuilding journey, I was not holding myself to the highest of standards. I was not winging it, but I was doing... I wouldn't say I'd never, I'd never, I never trained without intent, but I probably missed meals. Mm. I probably didn't do all the steps. I mm. didn't do all the cardio because I thought genetically I can do, genetically I'm better than, than other people. So mm. I don't have to do everything what they're doing. I can kind of do this and that. You can't like, what kind of attitude is that? Mm. <laughs> That's not a great attitude to have. Hold yourself to the highest standards. Make make demands that you don't negotiate with and stay there, you know, and you will be the best that you can be. So I got these two pictures here, yeah. And I wanna know like where where's the difference mentally and exactly what you're talking about in terms of holding yourself to different standards in the two pictures. So I think this is you a couple of years ago, like 2018, ignore the notifications, whatever, yeah. And then, you remember that picture, yeah? Oh, yeah, I remember that picture. And then <laughs> slide, slide uh, right, slide right, slide right. Is that Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Ah, look, man. It's two different guys, and it's not. So that's me, third place, PCA Universe. So the the first guy was this the guy that you're talking about? It was first, like this guy. He didn't have a clue. He didn't even know. He didn't think he could achieve. <laughs> the, face there, the first the first guy there. He didn't yeah. even know he could get on the stage mm. and be good at bodybuilding. He didn't even know you had to diet to go on stage. He didn't even know you had to. There was non-negotiables. <laughs> like yeah. he didn't yeah. even know mm. he was probably this guy didn't even have discipline mm. really and truly that's that is the guy <laughs> that's the guy like good genetics good physique always had that carried me a long way so it's like the the difference in um, AI I guess it's like the difference in what it takes yeah to go from something that the rest of the world perceives to be like yeah that, that guy is smashing it, yeah, to the really upper echelons, that tire tier. You still had to go up a gear in in, um, in in your mentality and the things that you do. The word that you said was non-negotiables. Like, what's, what's a non-negotiable, bro? And why is it? So what's a non-negotiable yeah, yeah. for me specifically or what oh I, like what, the what? concept of a non-negotiable for people that aren't bodybuilding but they're still listening and they know like okay it's not, 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 it's, non-negotiable is that might take you to that higher level it's, like, it's, it's, it's a standard that you should hold yourself to like, yeah and what is it like, for you as it's well it's almost like a promise that yeah. you make to yourself almost like a non-negotiable can be as simple as I'm going to brush my teeth every day, yeah. every day, twice a day. Yeah. Which, with no disrespect to anybody, we all yeah. know everybody isn't doing. Yeah. So you're not holding yourself to the highest standard for you for your personal hygiene. Right. Why is that? Why Why are you not doing that if you're claiming or saying you are a very hygienic person? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. going against who you're saying you are. Yeah. Which. And if you're going against who you say you say you are, then mm. how do you expect anybody else to take to, to take you seriously, to take to see you yeah. in the light that you're you're saying you're that you're in? To be, yeah. So ultimately, for me, it's like a non- promise to yourself. Yeah, it's a promise. Like, to I'm, you. like you said, I'm this type of person, or I'm a hygienic person. If you stop a guy in the street, let's go out to the street, do the street. And excuse me, mate, are you hygienic? No one's gonna say no. I'm Precisely. not. Everyone's going to say, yeah, I'm a hygienic person, but are you doing the non-negotiable things? Like, are you want to be a, 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 this type of person? So what's your non-negotiables? What standards are you holding, holding yourself, yourself to? to? And that's why it's, 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 it's person specific, definitely. It's not yeah. just a case of every person should brush their teeth twice a day. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A non-negotiable is a standard that any one person holds themselves to, to yeah. keep themselves in 
the brackets that they're saying that they're in or yeah, want to be in. That you want to be in. So you choose a bracket, you choose the type of person that you want to be, and then you choose the non-negotiables. And you commit to that, to mm. being that person. You commit. I'm going to be a person that gets yeah. up at five o'clock every yeah. day. You commit to that. Yeah. You make sure you get up at every day at yeah. five o'clock because that's what you said you're going to do. That's holding yourself at the highest standard yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Just like myself, I'm going to get up every single day. Cardio or morning movement is non-negotiable. Right. Meal one has to be in by a specific time. I yeah. will eat this many meals a day. These are non-negotiables. Non-negotiables. These non-negotiables will elevate me mm. tenfold if I keep these non-negotiables in. If I take these non-negotiables out, how am I going to measure my progression mm. against what? Mm. You know? So yeah. for me, it's probably the most important thing mm. when it comes to self Development. Self-development, personal development. Personal That's development. why I'm saying it's transferable skills because people, like I'm saying, yeah, is bodybuilding the most selfish sport on the planet? Like, what is the point of it? Is there a is there a greater is there a greater purpose? Is it the self work? And it's like, yo, without without you being the best person you can be for yourself, how are you gonna be the best person you can be for the world? Like, the world would much rather Jay Cohen be the best version of himself than not be the best version of himself. And it's the same with all of us. Would you not rather, as a man, yeah, would you, the world would rather you be the best version of you rather than a, a bad version of you or even, because what's the, what's the alternative? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you really want us running around doing the alternative or do you want to be, those to be the best version of ourselves? So what we can learn from, even from a branding point of view, when you're working on your personal brand, it's like a personal development journey. It's like myself, yeah? If you commit to learning, you commit to posting about learning, you commit to posting about the things that you're improving on, that's my non-negotiables. My non-negotiables are, I'm gonna learn certain things and I'm gonna share my learning and I have to, I can't, I can't give up, there is no giving up. And then part of that as well, is the fitness side of things because by being healthy it helps me to think clearer and have a good routine and all of these things so I feel like bodybuilding you gotta be you gotta be that person who wants to work on themselves and then you can share that with the world around you that positive vibe with exactly. the world around you as well like you're saying man non-negotiables non-negotiables in terms of you like Getting to where you want to be, right? Yeah. There's, I heard this, I heard this, um, Patrick Bet David said it, right? Patrick Bet David was saying to Dorian Yates, yeah, there's, there's, there's 7 billion people at the time on the planet, right? Now I think there's 8, 8 billion people on the planet. There's only one Mr. Olympia and there's loads of people that want to be bodybuilders. So what's your, what's your aim? There's 8 billion people. There's only one, Mr. Olympia, which everyone knows to be like the bodybuilding thing. But where are you trying to go with this? You... For me, for me personally, oh. Olympia is a goal for my for me, of course, mm. because that proves you are one of the best and you have became one of the best, which ultimately shows you have be ultimately become one of the ver the version that version of yourself is ultimately one of the best in the world so for that sort of recognition for me is is definitely needed because it proves that everything what i've been putting in is correct mm. my way my, my values my way of living is it all boils down to it's being correct it's mm. it, it's going to be validated at the highest level mm. but for me personally it's it's greatness that that i would say is is higher than an Olympia placing, you know, it's being great. It's being, how can I put this? I'm more for the journey than the end, so to speak. So the meeting everybody, the adventure, the, the travel in the world, I can do all that just from the vessel that I've been blessed with and hopefully create a lifestyle and a life that funds my generations after me, you know, my kids, my family, or my kids, my kid, my family. Well, maybe more. I want them, <laughs> 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 I want them all yeah. 
to be to to benefit from this you know i want mm. almost like a generational wealth so mm. to speak which mm. i believe can come from this yeah. I, I see loads of i don't see loads of people but there's examples you know you have you see me in pandas who have become great like mm. he's not specifically a bodybuilder is he like mm. But you could say he's one mm. because of what he does and the way he lives and his mm. way of living. But he's built a brand. But he's built a brand and the wealth is. I would. I don't want to sit here and talk about his wealth like I know. But I'd imagine it's it's a generational amount of wealth. Like yeah. people under him and before him will benefit from you can monetize your lifestyle. Yeah, from the wealth that is created and yeah. he's created all that from a physique. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? And that's the sort of vision I see. I believe I can create greatness out of this mm, to be mm, honest mm, that's mm. that's that's the main thing so the idea of greatness might would be like being able to live a lifestyle and to to support travel the world. yeah travel the world yeah 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 this is what i'm saying it's similar things like i want what i need from what i'm doing is freedom to travel to think think what I want I don't have to think about other shit I want to put my attention where I want to focus it do what I want do things that I choose to do M monetizing and earn a living through what I'm doing out of my own choice do you know what I mean and obviously be happy and satisfied so freedom to move about as well precisely whilst doing something that ultimately gets you up every single day it's not yeah. about yeah because there's, there's loads of people I, you know i don't like to put people down or anything like that but there's people yeah, that yeah, are living yeah. lives that they're not most proud of yeah. so to speak or they're living the average life or so happy you want to be or, you just want to be happy precisely yeah this makes me most happiest i know it can be i know it's going to be something i don't think it can be i know it's going to be something mm. i will travel the world with it i will explore as far as I can go with it. You understand what I mean? And the example for my son and all the rest of it, there's, there's, there's so much that mm. I know comes from me being this way mm. that I want to grow tenfold mm. and just become, I created this all from a thought mm. and then all from a body that I was blessed with. So can I ask like, what sort of things have you seen at, in the world that you mentioned like Simeon Panda and people like that, what sort of things have you seen that you recognise as things that you would be able to also do or that have given you inspiration as to things that you might be able to do? Like I know that you're focused on the bodybuilding and putting in the, the work and the non-negotiables, right? The things that you have to do every day. But what sort of things have you seen where it's like, yo, I could do that to be able to travel, I could do that, to be able to provide for my family, I could do that to be able to inspire other people. Um, I know that you're doing the online coaching as well, like what sort of things have you got in your sights and that you've seen already? Um, um, well, dominating professional shows within bodybuilding, of course, yeah. um, is definitely something that I've seen other people do and something that I believe I can do. Does that help you to build your brand? It definitely helps me to build my brand because it enables more people to see me, especially in countries where I'm definitely not known at all at this point. Right. Obviously, once you reach a certain level within bodybuilding, the shows then become international shows. Of course, you can still do local shows, but mm. international-based shows, which is where I would like my career to go. So we're talking, you'd be ending up in places like Spain, potentially Brazil. Mm. Poland, America, you name it. There's, there's, there's all kinds of places, and displaying your physique, displaying, displaying my your physique, the... ultimately displaying my physique, inspiring others also. You know, because mm. it as 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 I've realised whilst doing this journey, the amount of people I'm inspiring also mm. taking this step mm. also pushes me further and keeps me on track. I get messages daily from they could be. Burnt, burnt accounts to real big people and they're like keep doing what you're doing like mm. you actually like you don't understand how much you inspire me I remember waking up one day to a message mm. off my cousin obviously it's a family member and that mm. he's like you don't even know do you I'm like what he's like I put a picture of you on my fridge yeah <laughs> he's like your picture is on my fridge because the way you look that's how I want to look you mm. inspire me to look like that and mm. that was like the highest of praises and he wow. was like 
all these actions, what you're doing, you don't realize the effect you actually do have on other mm. people sometimes, not all the time, but mm. sometimes. And it's like seeing that and understanding that also pushes me further. So dominating mm. shows, of course, mm. um, traveling the world, which I see a lot of professional bodybuilders do, like mm. their families travel around with them. Mm -hmm. They meet and see people that they've never seen, exploring cities that they probably would never have went to without bodybuilding. Mm. Um, obviously building a brand, which mm. I do have, consistent and persistent yeah 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 which, yeah, yeah, which, yeah which i do have which i do need to push more personally mm. like but i will do now my competing season's over mm. um but yeah that's they're the key the key ones really mm. build the brand big so it's worldwide let's talk about that then consistent and persistent like when you say it's a brand like obviously it's a, it's a we're brand. Here, we're here, like, man. We're here. You, we, we, I'm just sure you talk about brands as much as you want, my brother. Like, what's um, yeah, what's what's it about? How does it manifest in the real world? How did it start? Um, like, what is it? It's almost a way of living. It is. I, you know what? I need to start. Don't like dim that. your light, man. Exactly. Don't dim your light. It Yo. is. It is yeah. a way of living. You're living. already inspiring people. You got. Your, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. I know. I know. And I've seen you posting a lot more as yeah. well. Yeah, because I'm realizing there's, I've realized there's more. I wouldn't like to say an audience, but there is, there is, there is more of a demand for it. Which, mm. but there always has been. Mm. I've just doubted it. You owe it to the world, really, isn't it? Exactly. Kind of owed that. And it's like I'm, a, I'm a reserved person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm quiet. You mm. know, if if you just meet me, I, I'm a quiet person. You'll say that guy don't talk. Is what's up with him? I'm one of them people where I will speak when spoken to. I won't just walk into a room and be speaking. It's, mm. That's not my character. Mm. So, but yeah, it's something I do need to change. Mm. Definitely. I'm not dimming my light. So it is yeah. a way of living. Consistent and persistent. Consistent and persistent. And it's- No it's cap. It's transferable into all works, walks of life too. And that's mm. what I've, that's what I realized at the very, very, very beginning. Because no matter what, no matter what, wherever I've applied them two words, I've made a success, mm. like regardless of how big or small. Let's talk about that. Where, when was the first time you started to realize? Almost, I could almost say football, like mm. what we spoke about at the mm. very beginning. You're like six years old these Six times, years old. So. We could always say before that, when yeah. I was three to four, playing yeah. video games, like oh, yeah, yeah. not being good at video games and thinking, oh, I'm not going to be good at this and just thinking, you know what, persist through it. You will, you have to get past this. this them times, you just know so, that if yeah, I keep doing if it. If I keep doing it, eventually yeah. I'll get through it. So yeah. your understanding of it is very basic, but that yeah. the laws of consistent and persistent would still apply to that. Because right. You've still been persistent in continuing to play mm. but you've also become consistent in playing it because you're playing it more mm. which enables you to grow and get better at it mm. which mm. starts with where which then goes back to where we started it sounds, it sounds like uh, you know the laws of consistent and persistent it sounds like it could be a little fuck. you could have them written out the law. <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you know what it's something I should do you know because as as a brand yeah. it's something that that I, that I should because mm. Again, with it being person dependent or situation dependent, mm. but it's still the laws are still the laws. Mm. You know, they still apply mm. regardless of the situation or position. Mm. And I also believe that no matter where you apply them laws, you can become good at anything. Mm. You know, if you apply biggie and consistent and persistent, just like you with this, so to speak. Yeah, like there's bro. many a times I don't want to like just open up conversations that we've had in the past because we might not want to speak about it. We'll talk about whatever, but, but I'll edit it out. I'll edit it out. We've had conversations yeah. where I've sat with you yeah. and you're like, Jay, I just don't know if this is even the right thing to be doing, yeah. man. Yeah. Just not do it. I'm not yeah. making any money out of it. I'm yeah. not, yeah. it's not this. It yeah. doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Yeah. And it's like, and I've, I've advised you like, no, like believe in what you're doing though. Like mm. learn more, do some more, do this. I was in my yard and fucking on the, Paling first one right, and you come into the kitchen, and I wrote down uh, this is like a um, this is like a social media strategy. I was like, I need to post about these things, yeah, and that, and then look, 
post this regularly over this many weeks, but we'll create it all here and then we can split it up into this many posts. And, blah, blah, blah. and you was like, yo, you, you need to be doing this. Yeah. <laughs> you had the paper and you was like, this is what you need to be focusing on that. And um, yeah, I've really started to see the benefit now because now I get people inbox me like, hey bro, random people from I don't, God knows where they are in the country. They find a page and like, hi bro, I've got uh, this company and I was wondering your advice. And it's like, <laughs> um, I had to be consistent with it, man. And, th and this, this is my point. And yeah. no matter where you apply the laws of being consistent and persistent or the definitions, however you want to look at them mm. two words, wherever you apply them, mm. the longer you apply them, the mm. greater you become or the mm. better you become mm. at whatever it is you're doing. Mm. So consistent and persistent is a way of life. Would, would, would we might see some content about around, you know, consistent we're, we're or just around the Jake You know what? Cohen we're, we're, or... we're definitely going to see more around consistent and persistent because as... Just like this now, nobody's really asked. Well, they do ask, but the understanding of it isn't clear, so mm. to speak. It's two words that I say, mm. but no one's really clear on why. Mm. So this is probably one of the first times. It's mindset. Go on, it's probably one of the first on, times. One of the first times I've ever sat here and explained it. Yeah, to yeah. To be fair. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know what it means. Mm. And even if you just look up the two definitions of the word, you can kind of understand what I'm saying. Mm. But to understand that you can apply them to anything and everything and still be good at it still mm. and, and be good at it. Mm. It's like people don't have that understanding if that's what I'm saying. Go out there and achieve you what you want to I mean? achieve. It's not just a case of I'm a bodybuilder, be consistent and persistent and you'll be good at bodybuilding. No. Consistent and persistent is everything and anything you want it to be and you'll be good at it. Um, Do you understand what I mean? On. So yeah, shut down. That's it. Podcast <laughs> done. Podcast <laughs> done. We're out of here. We got what we need. We got what we need. Cut. We're all right, man. We got it. That's the money. That's so it. That's exactly. it. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's, 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 Snap that up. Yeah. Package yeah. that up. Put that in the reels. Put that on the YouTube. But that's the introduction. Sorted, mate. So that's, Sorted. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. Consistent, uh, persistent. It's, it's a big... It's gonna be a big thing. Yeah, it will it, be a big thing yeah, because, it, because it, how can it not be? You mm. know, that's 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 how. Mm, okay, that's why massive. I always say it's it. Big still, you know, it's not. It's not any one thing. So check this one. Yeah, you've now got what seems to be an affiliate partnership with these brands on the table. So what 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 have we got here? Like, can you explain what's on the table? Like, these are... Give, 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 us, give us a display. What is it? What, what we got here, man? Who's, who's this guy? Who's this geezer? You on know the who this is. Well, if we're in bodybuilding, everybody, the yeah. whole bodybuilding world knows yeah. who this is. This is the great yeah. Dorian Yates. Yeah. Six time. Yeah. Mr. Olympia from England. Yeah. Birmingham. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> like, that crazy. Just, you know... I can't even begin to talk about this man's greatness or yeah. where to start with it, but Mad. consistent and persistent fits him to a T, mm. you know, this, this man here, what, what he was able to achieve from a very small dungeon based gym mm. in Birmingham with not much really, like he went on to become the best in the world six times, mm. you know, a feat that. I think only two, three people have beat him on. Mm. Like, so understand the levels of, of greatness that this man is. But this is his brand. This is a full sponsorship for myself. Yeah. Um, a first. Mm. Um, first I've, sponsorship. Yeah, first sponsorship. Mm. I've, I've, I've worked sure. with the brand prior, so you may have seen me post things and do yeah. things with them before, but it was never a full sponsorship you actually at the um, was it Arnold yeah. Expo yeah yeah yeah, at the yeah. Store. we was at the Arnold Expo I, I managed to meet him yeah and I, got I managed like, to meet him yeah. for the first time yeah, there yeah, as well yeah. which was just mind blowing for yeah. me personally mm. absolutely crazy to be fair because I remember watching videos and they were like you watch, you watch these videos and you think yeah that's the kind of great that is the, the levels that he, these people were able to achieve and you don't sit there and think yeah, I'll meet him one day. You you generally watch and you think almost like that's the direction you want to go in, but mm. that you don't look at it like I can I'll be able to ever meet this guy. And then mm. it's like you work hard, I've worked hard, and it's like 
Now I'm shaking his hand. It's yeah. like Do you feel yourself sort of getting closer to that goal now. It's yeah, like the oh. like the sense that the universe is put, as, getting you closer as, as to As I said, the guy the goal. Who, who, like, who we showed, who stood there, like he had no direction. He didn't mm. know how he was going to get to this. Mm. He never even knew he could get to this. He never knew I would. I never knew I'd get a sponsor. I never believed I was going to become a sponsored athlete by Dorian Yates's brand. He just thought. He's going to train hard. He's going to work hard. Mm. Something must come from it, you know? Mm. So it's, 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 it's a, a very surreal, happy moment for myself that I've been able to achieve this because it's something that I've wanted. It's something that become more clear to me along the journey that this would help. This is something that I would need. This is more of a, a recognition thing as well. Like you are doing the correct things because... At the beginning, as I said, you start off, I had no direction. I didn't know mm. where to start. It was mm. like, go to the gym, mm. eat the right foods. And that's where it begins. But how many people have that same beginning? Yeah. Do you understand what I yeah. mean? It's like, who knows what direction's correct from yeah. what isn't. Yeah. So then when you start, when all these things start coming, it's coming like... together. Okay. And I said to you, I goes, yo, like... Um, oh. <laughs> You know, obviously, brand specialist in the building. I'm like, yo, if you can get like an affiliate deal with one of these, like, yo, DYs over there, like, maybe you can get that come. And you was like, you know what? I'm not really like, it will come. Like, when it comes, it comes. You know, I'm just focusing on the what, company. What needs to be done? What needs to be done? And boom, next thing, you've 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 got that medal. And it's like a, a week later, or how, like two a month later. You're a sponsored athlete as well. So it's that focus on the non-negotiables. Focus on what's focus important. Focus on keeping yourself to the highest of standards. And everybody else looks at you in the same way that you're looking at yourself. Yeah. You see? Uh-huh. Yeah. And there's Wrap. the circle. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap that up. <laughs> Wrap that up. But, but yeah. again, of course. View yourself in the highest regard. Focus on being the best version of you. And everyone else will look at you the same way that you look, you look at, yourself. at yourself so tell me about the moment that you became an official sponsor it, where were you like where remember, was... well it was must it was the day after the two bros show so it was the day after i just finished sixth again actually in the mm. two bros show sixth out of 11 athletes yeah and it was five that managed to get back on stage and it was it? five that managed Bastard. to get back on stage so i didn't make the first call outs which again was disappointing but again my perception was a lot different this time mm. like i smiled i gave it my all yeah I you did. did you did i you did, did all i could do i presented for me even mm. still i preferred the package i presented at two bros and i did the package i prefer showing at pca i believed that was a better package mm. That's just my personal preference. Mm. And I knew I'd put everything into that. There's nothing, that, that outcome couldn't have been any different because that was the best me. That was the best it could have been. Mm. You understand what I mean? So mm. I come off that stage to so the next day and it was like, right, we're going to do something a bit different today. Rear, rear, rear. We've done all that. And then I've gone to the DY stand. Where was this stand? The stand was like in the middle of the Is PCA. this still at two, bro? Oh, PCA. PCA. Okay. PCA yeah, one yeah, yeah. the next day. And I remember going in there and I sat down and I know um, <laughs> the people with the brand, mm. obviously my coach, Scott, Team Freaks. So shout mm. out to Scott Yeah, too. shout out Team Freaks. See, I should have shouted him out um, ages ago. Way to go, the yeah. Man behind, the man with the plan, the yeah. man. It gave me the belief, the man, you know, the man. That's all yeah, I can tell you, the yeah, man, yeah. the man, the top man. Um, Salute team freaks. Um, yeah, we sat down in there and as he does, he likes to show me off. You know, he gives me this confidence that I don't have generally. Like I don't walk around and think, look at me. It's like yeah. he generally does that for me. Like, look yeah. at this guy, look how, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Stood me up, I started posing. The guy immediately just went, yeah, we'll have him on board. And it was like, you what? It was like this guy was like, you, you, you back to everything. He was like, is he your? Yeah, it was like, is he your sponsor? Is he with the? Pro he's with the. Pro he kind of said it like, um, <laughs> took it for granted. Like, oh, he's with the program, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, no. And then it was like, yeah, but, 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 within five minutes, it was like, yeah, we'll have you on. Everything will be sorted out. Yeah, next week, just and it was just that quick. And I was, just, I remember sitting there like, what the hell? Thought it, <laughs> thought it would be hard. <laughs> yeah. Thought, yeah. Is, is that how you get a sponsor? <laughs> That's what you do. Just sit there. It was like, 
So when someone, if someone was to ask you, right? So this is a good question, right? If someone yeah. was to ask you, you got one of the youths from the ends in Radford, he comes up to you, Jay, how can I get myself a sponsor for what I'm doing? I know a kid that does BMXing, for example, and he's buying his own bike equipment and he's traveling to the shows himself. And it's a lot of money for kids and whatever. As you say, you want to, live a life that you're happy living and, and get paid for it and stuff like that so if someone asks you like jay i see you with the dy nutrition how do i get a sponsor for what i'm doing what would your advice be ultimately i tell that kid to not worry about the sponsor i tell him to believe in himself and believe in what he's doing work hard and become good at what you're doing. And ultimately, I believe everything what you want out of it will follow. That is what I'd tell him. I personally wouldn't say go and ask anybody. I wouldn't say take this route because that one route will get you there. Like, it's ultimately gonna boil down to that, that one kid and how bad he wants what he wants. Ultimately, that's what I've come to realize because there was a time when I really wanted a, a sponsor. I right. really wanted it. Like I'd probably ask or I'd message brands and be like, "Oh, is there any chance sir, I could do some work with you?" Rear, rear, rear. And it was like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, nothing ever came from any of that ever. Like some brands would say, "Oh, we might be able to offer you this, or we might be able to offer you that," but it's like I'm not doing enough personally for them to recognize me. And that's where I ultimately I believe the stuff comes from. The, the, everything happens in the magic. It happens where the work's being done. So I tell that kid, work, work harder, do more, become better at what you're doing, but ultimately believe in it. Don't for a second doubt what you're doing. Know what you're doing, know why you're doing it and keep pushing it that way. Everything else will evolve and come to you yeah. rather than you directly going specifically to it or specifically asking me how did how do you get this because my way of getting this is not going to be the same way of you Your getting, way it. getting it Yo. you know? <laughs> package it up package it up chop it up put it out there you see the magic the magic that you're looking for is in the work that you haven't I done haven't yet done yet yeah I've seen that um, and that's a powerful quote Powerful, bro. powerful quote. It's open to interpretation, but yeah. a powerful quote yeah. if understood correctly. Yeah, you know, you want that magic sponsor, put in the work, put in the magic in, work, in the magic work. Yeah, all the magic usually happens. Like it's not, it's it's, it's not like, and there's too many examples of this. You know, so what I'm trying to say what um, got, what, what, what's the examples? But I was also going to ask like, what's um. Yeah, what's the deal with the sponsorship? Like, would you get? Is there the affiliate code as well? And would they um, provide yeah, to you as well? Discount code J Cohen DY10. Get you disc, yeah, they'll get you 10% off everything on site. Um, it's a full sponsorship. Um, so they'll send me supplements, clothing. Um, I'll be able to do photo shoots. I think they're going to do their own podcast eventually soon, too. Obviously, I'll do loads of work with. I got the behind the scenes pass for whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. You come in with me. You know you come in with me. That. Yeah. <laughs> we're in. We're in. You know yes, you come in with me. And mate. that um, means that you, the viewer, are also <laughs> coming with us on the show, wherever, <laughs> around the world, as he said Dubai, Spain, Brazil, all of that. We're, we're, we're everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so, sorry to cut you off. Just had to make sure that. Just got something for you to sign here. <laughs> we'll sign that it will be right but yeah go on so so yeah um, where was that photo shoots yeah, yeah. obviously representing the brand mm. wherever they're going to be and it's a brand that you're happy to represent oh, as well I'm very happy to you got to align with brands that you're happy to represent and um I really need to like go shout out the, the Cheesecake Shop as well because they were the first people that I worked with as a brand specialist um, but I don't, not like for anyone but it's like it's not the brand that I really wanted to align with for this podcast. Like the, the people that I'm, the advertisement that I'm going to put in this now is Gravity Fitness. 
that is the brand that I really, really align with more. So this is a brand that you're happy to align with. So oh, it's yeah. important to partner with a brand uh, that you're happy with. But I was also going to say this is what I've just remembered earlier. I wouldn't have the affiliate partnership with Gravity Fitness. Shout out Gravity Fitness, by the way. Use code ABS10 on the website for 10% off everything. You know what I'm saying? So me and Jay, we're both sat here with affiliate partnerships with brands that we both align with. And even though we've got way further to go on our journeys, this is still something that four years ago, when I started this journey, when you started this journey, we were aiming towards and we didn't know where, where this was, was gonna, gonna, gonna come go. from. That's, <laughs> where this was gonna come that's, from. That's the it's, it's a beautiful thing, really, isn't it? But really. If, re, yo, really. It's, listen. <laughs> don't dim the light. Don't dim the light. Like we I, I'm God, I'm so that's what I'm so grateful for. Like we did not know where that was going to come from. And like, you know, you spoke about like doing certain things in life and you go down certain trajectories and you're just trying to help out moms and this and that. And granted, like we've got slightly different backgrounds. We're both from nuts and stuff like that. And it both felt that same vibe, like go down certain routes, trying to just chip in and be a man, be self-sufficient and help out family, etc. And my mom always... Still to this day, God bless her, and we're, we're, we're getting there. She said, I'm just, you know what, son, I'm just trying to make money while I sleep. Like, how do I make money while I sleep? Like, you, you deserve to be happy, you deserve abundance, you deserve to enjoy life, and while you still can, and not everyone gets to do that while they're on this planet. And what I've recently discovered through a brand specialist is that the affiliate partnership model is a way to earn money while you sleep. The only thing now to do is scale the amount of attention that gets put on the... Sirens outside, God bless the emergency services doing their work, but the only way to scale the, um, the power of what we've got going on is to get more attention on, on ourselves as brands and more people have the opportunity to use the affiliate codes because with my affiliate code, Anytime somebody buys a product through the website and uses the code ABS10, they get 10% off anything on the Gravity Fitness website, which is phenomenal. And I also get 10% commission on anything that they've purchased. So that is a serious way in which people can monetize brand. And look how we're doing two completely different things. I'm looking into branding and marketing and podcasting and your bodybuilding, but we've both got a similar system of earning and making money that can happen through branding. So that's just my tip to, uh, to the people that are watching. Like if you build a brand around your lifestyle and like Jay said, you do the non-negotiables and you work on yourself to be the best version of yourself that you can be, you can monetize by finding a brand that you really believe in. Like you can make P, you can, yo, you, you, you can make P build a brand and set up something like an affiliate partnership that me and Jay are both sat here with. So I just want to, yo, well done, man, for getting your sponsorship, my you bro. Too. Yeah, I'm proud of you. and the future, proud of you too, man. So I've got two things here. You know, you're talking about you want to be the bigger guy, right? So I've seen you on stage and stuff like that. And it's like you haven't come sixth place to people that, have not got the level of detail that you have had. It's not, you haven't come sixth place to people that have put in, I don't, I'm just saying that it doesn't look like they've put in more work than you, you know, when it comes down to aesthetics and that's goes back to the initial question, like what is bodybuilding? Yeah, it's mass, but it's also like the details in it. But you can tell that the guys on stage, one, they've been doing it for way longer and two, the mass was just way bigger done yours so what does that feel like you know like if you're the big yeah, guy but you're still the little you're the, the little guy I know what it feels like being the little guy right <laughs> walking around cause I you know what I'm saying I know what it's like walking around the little guy but you're on stage yeah you're gonna be the big guy brother and you kinda like you're getting almost dwarf dwarf yeah Bought. like sixth place Bought. to the people they just still must, a big guy it's, yeah it's, you know what it it was a, my, a bit of a, I don't want to just swear, but it was a bit of a mind fuck yeah, yeah, for yeah. me personally, yeah, yeah, because yeah. as I said, I've always been the bigger guy. Yeah. Most gyms I go to local to me, mm. I'm usually the bigger, the bigger person in that gym or one of the strongest. Not mm. like that 
really matters when you're on stage because it's ultimately it's what you present on the day always you know, the judge will never ask you how much mm-hmm. have you benched how much have you scraped none of that matters when it comes to presenting a physique on stage but mm-hmm. um, it was a reality check really mm-hmm. you know because I'm not the big guy <laughs> like there is people bigger than me there is people genetically could even say genetically superior in, in some regards, you know. I know where my genetics and where my strengths lie, but there are everyone's built different and you have to just accept that ultimately. But at first it was like, I've always been the big guy. Now it's like I'm stepping on stage and I'm almost the little guy. Almost. Mm. Mm. It's not it's not it's not the greatest feeling. So mm. I understand we all the little people, how all yeah. little people feel. Yeah. <laughs> felt no, we feel great. We're doing fine. <laughs> We're doing fine, mate. Are you all right? I'm really joking. We're I'm really right, joking. Mate. I, I understand. T- I understand how yeah. it's, it's, it, it feels to feel small, yeah. basically. But for me, I know there's still strength in being small. I don't. You can't underestimate me because I'm smaller than you. Because where you may be bigger than me, I'm better than you in other places. You yeah. know. So, yeah. and at the end of the day bodybuilding can fall down to preference yeah. from judges and mm. aesthetically pleasing will be rewarded on some stages a lot more so than big size and I have been rewarded through it at my last competition there was people bigger than me where I placed third mm. there was people bigger than me on that stage by far big I'm talking 40 pounds bigger than me on that stage and I was rewarded mm from with my aesthetic so it doesn't bother me so much anymore but at the beginning it was like a oh dear i need to put i need to lift something else here because yeah. i don't know what's happened <laughs> there's that there's them tablets <laughs> <Magic book. laughs> so um this is this is the shadow Mr. Yates, yeah. And he's talking about like, he had this like competitiveness. Friendly smile, I'll give him a stone face. And then I walked out and you know, you come and you go in this kind of relaxed, semi-relaxed pose. So I went into the semi-relaxed pose and on purpose, I properly banged my elbow into him. Yeah, and he must have been, what the hell is this crazy guy? <laughs> <laughs> is this on video? Like, I don't know, if you get video over the pre judging ah, you might get great. that, yeah, you might get that. Yeah, so I banged into him, and I did it a couple of times to let, to let him know, you know? And then in the pose down, Lee Haney does this pose where he brings out his arms mm-hmm. like this, and I was behind, and I know he kind of got me out of the corner of his eye, and he clipped me with his, with his knuckle. <laughs> I think he was like, okay, have some back, you know? And then uh, it was years and years afterwards, I sat down with him and got a chance. You know, we don't see each other that often. We were at a show, and I got a chance to sit down and, and talk one-on-one, and I'm like, Lee, I need to talk to you about something. He's like, what's that? Well, I, I kind of need to apologize for something. He's like, what? I said, do you remember on, you know, the, that Olympia and I came and I banged and this? He's like, yeah, I thought you wanted to fight me or something. Man. He said this yeah, to you, yeah, so he yeah. remembers it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, this happened and, you know, it was a bullshit story and I'm young and I'm psyched up and I'm sorry. Because <laughs> he's just a gentleman. He's a, he's That's a what I hear. Guy, I hear know? he was a very uh, much yeah, of a yeah, gentleman. So, well, have you um, experienced anything like this? Um, yeah. Because that's the vibe that I, I felt. Feel you like, know when you're like a little guy on stage, it's like, Yeah, Yo. it's sort of like, I've got something to prove here. So, yeah. more so, I'd say, in the, latter com- in the latter competitions, I felt more confident within my ability and what I'd brought and what I'd got. Most, in the first one, when I was more dwarfed, I think I was more shy, yeah. so to speak. But I didn't really understand what I'd had as opposed to me going on that stage then was like, and seeing all these bigger people, it was like, right, I've already lost this. That was, which, which was very- The first time, the, the first time. Uh, so at the universe, it was like, right, there's about four or five guys here that are, that are way bigger than me. Yeah. I've already lost this, so. Yeah. But in my head, it was like, I know who's gonna win this. Mm. So I immediately kind of pinned myself to him, so to speak. So mm. when we'd walked out, I knew I was stood next to him. So I tried to make myself as big as possible. Mm. I tried to show him up, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, and I'll yeah. be honest about yeah. that. Yeah. And if, if we ever sat down, I'd yeah. tell him, yeah, yeah, I wanted to show you up. Even yeah. though I knew I couldn't, I yeah. wanted to show you up, yeah. you know? Yeah. But 
I guess the belief in myself at that time wasn't as strong yeah. to be as confident as Dorian was yeah, there because yeah. he knew what he had. He knew how great he was going to become. Yeah. I wholeheartedly believe that, which yeah. is why he went as far as he did. Yeah. So, but in the last, latter conversation, latter, yeah, for sure, I would make sure people knew I was stood next to them. Like, yeah. for sure, like, for sure even prior to I'd be like are we ready to dance boys like, is that what you're saying I'm the person that yeah. a lot of people like I've been behind at three shows now and usually when you line up to go on stage it's yeah. like most competitors don't speak really I've right. found anyway obviously yeah. everyone's in their own heads everyone's concentrating on what they're going to bring mm. I do like to break the ice and like make them know yeah that yeah. the, the, this guy's here he's come to he has come to, to he's a serious yeah guy, he's come yeah. and he's coming to do something here yeah. so I'll be like oh, yeah, everyone alright yeah. yeah yeah ready to dance yeah lads let's go up there and dance then let's yeah. give it him let's show him let's, let's see they think let's he's see. this guy I've been let's on the see. circuit yeah. however long <laughs> I've been on the circuit guy. 10 years as this guy has come I've never seen him before and yeah. he's acting like he's gonna go up there and do this but you know like yeah that's me that's me you know we've, at the end of the day we've worked so hard Let's go and have some fun. Mm. We're going to ruffle a few feathers. We ruffle a few feathers, but it's all professional anyway. There's no, you know what I mean? You don't come off stage and think, you know, I don't really like that guy. At the end of the, you know what I mean? We're all there for the same thing. Let's yeah. enjoy it. Let's ruffle some feathers and that's it. Yeah. You know? No, I hear that. People true. remember you that way too. And I've built some good relationships coming off stage when people are like, yeah, oh, yeah, just mad you are. Yeah, yeah. No, it was nice that you did that though. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, Makes you more of an approachable person, I reckon, too. Yeah, let's play this one. Like boxing or, or something where they're trying to retain that yeah. uh, energy or whatever. There was no real reason to do that. But it happened anyway. He's talking about semen retention, like, before things, saying that obviously he didn't have to do that, basically. From just complete exhaustion. Like I was completely exhausted like the last four or five weeks before Mr. Olympia and sex was just like something that was not, my body was just on survival mode, man. It's not interested in trying to procreate and not at all. No, thank you. Not, no energy. I go to the gym, I put everything and then I come home, I'll be like, literally like this. Cause you're on a, you know, this is the only sport where you're eating less. You're eating less calories, you're giving your body less fuel, and you're doing more training and harder training. And you, you know, you're trying to get contradictory goal of maximum muscle mass and minimum body fat. It's totally contradictory, and you're trying to balance that, and it's exhausting. Are you able to at all have say no? Not saying everything. I can wholeheartedly relate to that, yeah. like in every way, shape, or form. Like, I've probably been embarrassed last year to sit here and say, I agree with that, but I wholeheartedly agree with that. <sighs> to be fair, I become so focused, my sex drive diminishes pretty fast, mm. like probably earlier than that. I think when you get down to a low body fat, is it true that your libido... So much changes close to the competition. I'd say leading up to the comp, so probably the first... So let's say you do a 12-week diet, 15-week diet is what people typically do. The first four to six weeks, you probably still functioning at a normal rate so to speak your food will still be at a good level but you'll be you'll be etching down but not etching down as sharply as you will be let's say at that seven to eight week mark that's where the changes pretty much start because your body fat starts dropping slightly faster but i mean everyone diets different you see mm. but this is a process that i can only speak from my point of view I can't really mm. speak from other people's because as I say everyone diets down different so about seven to eight week mark is when you usually start to feel prep so to speak for me you start to really realize oh wait I am eating less food here mm. there is less energy to do what I'm usually doing it is taking me a bit more for me to walk up and down the stairs it is you know everything else is becoming like even your tolerance is changing like people are becoming a slightly a bit more <laughs> annoying so no, and these, these are the things these are the fields. sex drive sex drive avenge like for me at that point probably i could even say 10 weeks for me i'm usually that focused that sex is usually pretty much non-existent what about point. after you win the medal even after even now sitting yeah. here now i'm probably four weeks after show i'm still not sitting here like i don't really you know it's not really come back mm. yet 
so to speak like obviously you have sex you do yeah. what what you yeah. do with your yeah. partner or whoever yeah. whatever you're doing yeah but it's not fully come back yet no yeah not not even at this point so mm. definitely be aware of them things Tick. when you're when you're on prep for sure but ultimately the focus is the focus and if you are usually that focused you usually get the result you was focused for usually mm. Mm. so you have to weigh up the good with the bad or how you look at the good and the bad that's where you have to take yourself mentally in it and that's where yeah and physically physically it's gonna affect you mentally so um no thank you bro and so you've met all of these people you met all of these people through your journey right fortunately and very much yeah. they've dropped little bits of advice to you obviously only you know what they said to you in person is that something that you would share with the with the people um listening it's a tough one it's a mm. tough i mean i don't want to sit here and feel like i'm withholding information from people mm. i just feel like <sighs> can i explain this for instance I had a very good conversation with Phil, a brief conversation, but a very good one. And I took from it what I took from it, which was very personal. Um, he wasn't even being very specific. He was more speaking in general terms about the hard work and the sacrifices and making correct decisions for longevity, because ultimately telling me to remember there's life after bodybuilding, which I believe most bodybuilders are not really in sync with ultimately because they'd be making better decisions for themselves long term and that's not criticizing anybody or anybody's decision making progress pro progress i just believe he is proof in the pudding of that he definitely knew there was life after bodybuilding because there's so many bodybuilders that he competed with that are no longer here through poor I, wouldn't, well, I don't want to sit here and say they made poor decisions so they died, but ultimately they would have been making some poor decisions along their career, which has ultimately coincided with their passing. Not all, you know, because some people pass away from whatever reason, but the ones that we know have passed away from the specific reasons, they've ultimately made poorer decisions. And he's seems to be an advocate for making better decisions obviously he's made poor decisions you know but you don't want to die man. but you don't want to die that's what I mean and ultimately he looked at longevity throughout his career he did because you hear he didn't want to take trend he didn't want to do insulin where people are doing that for fun at, at this current point and they didn't even reach the heights he ever reached didn't even win some people haven't even won a professional show do you understand what I mean and they're, they're already way past the level of doing things that he ever reached and he's one of the best to ever do it hmm. and Did ultimately you? the conversations that I had with him I've really made sure I listened to because they're the examples you want to follow hmm. ultimately at the end when it's all said and done he can then look back and give out advice because he's now living past the life that he was living hmm. Do you understand what I mean? There's loads of people that you cannot get that advice from within the Price, sport. Priceless. priceless. You see, so price. to me, it was priceless. I can't sit here and share everything, but it yeah. was just understand the moments were priceless. No, listen, and it was based. That. It was based appreciate around that. longevity. It was based around what I'm currently doing. It was yeah. based around how to become. And then even sitting there and listening to him talk on stage with Ryan Terry, Ryan Terry, who is now men's physique Mr. Olympia so shout out to Ryan Terry yeah. unbelievable achievement worked unbelievable to yeah. think he just ran a show a couple of weeks ago and that was you was there and I was there the gym, and I, and I, was yeah it? the Gymshark show yeah. and I've met him shook his hand and then he's a couple of weeks later he's on stage winning the biggest trophy of them all credit to that to that man too you know and can I say, well, quickly, yeah, I know, bro, we've had the best conversation. We could literally do this for, for way longer as well, in it for years. Literally. So, yeah, so, um, but what was it like um, working, you know, what was it like being a Gymshark, like, athlete, Ryan Terry, athlete? You was there in the mix, bro, two, two bros, athlete. You know uh, what? It's like, I didn't really look at it 
like that until I was really there, stood mm. there, and it mm. was like, it was like I'm receiving like these sort of things to yeah. say I'm a competitor yeah. and yeah, yeah. And then literally going on the stage and it was like, I'm really here amongst all this. Like mm. from where I've come from, started from, as we spoke about in the beginning, like that guy who we showed on camera who didn't know where he would end up or what the outcome would be. And now I'm standing here, a gym shark competitor, Ryan Terry British finals. Like it's a huge show. It's a huge show international show people had flown in from all out the people that i was up against were from co different corners of the world like it was just huge i kind of can't put it into words mm. i should have made a post about it by now but i can't yeah. put it into words yeah, yeah. how surreal it was for me Stupid. personally it was just a pleasure to be a part of that's that's the best well, way for thanks me to. thanks for inviting us down as well man. oh yeah i told you you come in everywhere I think, I yeah. you go in everywhere <laughs> mate. That, and that means that you <laughs> Watching, you're also coming with us, man. The invitation's so, open, always. Let's, let's um end with some gold, right? Some 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 value. I know you've been reading what Diary of a CEO as well. I got this as well. Thank you, thank you to my boy that gifted me this book. But um, yeah, you were saying that there's a particularly um significant bit of here that you have taken in it and that that helps as well so like is there anything else as well any other like things that you've watched books reading i need to get into this man i'm sorry my boy that bought me this i've not fully dived into it at all but yeah what do you what do you have from here that was um well the lessons what we were speaking about was ultimately the five cups that stephen talks about of success what you know, what you can do, who you know, what you have, and what they think of you. Exactly. Ultimately, them five things there are so important when it comes to self-development and becoming great. We overlook three of those buckets. And he puts the reason as to why we, he believes we overlook it, and it all boils down to ego. What I found was that whilst reading it, it gave me a different perspective. It almost showed me a perspective of how I used to look at things, which was very egotistical, which is I would look at, I would look at the value in something. So I'd look at a person and say, oh, he's not really wearing the right stuff. He's not really, so depending on what he's got, sort of provides me the value of what he's saying, mm -hmm. which is such a poor view to look at things in general. And that's just me being specific to, a person, let's say, not any individual person, but just a person. So any given situation, you're you're overlooking the ultimate value, the, 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 the three values you should already have filled up. You're ultimately overlooking these values and starting with what you believe you should have and what you've got. But ultimately you need to fill the three buckets before to understand what you have and what you've got. So work on you have to work on filling what the you buckets know in the correct order. What Whereas you can do. I probably skipped, I did skip the first three buckets and was so concerned oh. with filling the final two buckets, which are what you have and, and what they think of you. Precisely. Mad. No, I'm just getting so it. So, do no. you understand what I was trying to say to yeah. you? So, that's where my attention was prior. So, this says. The five buckets are this, yeah, what you know, what you can do, who you know, what you have, and what they think of you. And so you was focused on what I have what and what have people think of what me. What people think of you rather than rather than working on what you know, what you can do, and who you know. Precisely. And you fill that one first. You fill the first bucket what you know. And then what you can do. Uh, becomes greater becomes greater Cause precisely because you know more because you know more yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, 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 you yeah. cannot fill yeah. four and five without yeah. one two and three and then you when you can do more you know more people precisely which then adds more value to what you're doing yeah and then you have well you, then you have more and then you have more yeah precisely and then finally people will think more of you 
Exactly. So don't worry about what people think of you. Exactly. Worry about you might, what you know. And don't worry about what, what you've you got. have. Yeah, don't worry about what you've don't got. Don't worry about what you've so, got. So it kind of takes it back to that, that you that comes up to you and is like, Jay, I, I, I ain't got a sponsor. I need a sponsor. You see? I need to get one. <laughs> and you say, nah, focus on what, what you, know you know and what you can do. Work on yourself. Precisely. Put yourself about. Yeah. Then you're around people. You're around more people. Yeah. So now yeah. your first three buckets are filling. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So yeah. then ultimately it enables you to fill the other two. To fill the other two, yeah. Whereas yeah. when I read this, it resonated with me because I realized I was filling two buckets at the end. But there's no value mm. in filling those two buckets without filling the others before, which is probably why I... I felt like I was stagnating a lot in life in general. Mm. You understand what I mean? It wasn't until I went backwards and started to understand, I need to start building an understanding with what I'm actually trying to do. <laughs> do you understand what I mean? And that's just, just, and, and I'll tell you the truth, that's not even a chapter in that book. That's yeah. part of the introduction. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember re I read that and I ended up speaking to my partner and saying, I don't even need to read any more of this. Mm, like, mm, that's mm, resonated mm. with me so much. I could sit here and speak to you about this for a good hour or so just yeah. from reading that, the first few pages yeah, of this yeah. book. I haven't even got into the laws yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know already that book's greatness. Major like, so shout out Stephen. He's someone who I definitely look up to mm. and aspire to. Ultimately, like, if you watch Dragons Den, you'll know yeah. Stephen's been on there. When you read the book, you know how successful Stephen is and how he's and where he's heading and what he's doing, you know. So, and these are the examples I believe you should be following. Like, obviously, there's no instructions to life, yeah. you know, but I believe there's value in, 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 in people. Of course, there is. And the successful people are the ones we should be learning from, not trying to tear down, which is what seems to happen a lot nowadays. Mm. People, Rather than giving out flowers and learning, people look for holes and would rather pull down. Yeah. It's a strange, strange process, but that's just the world we live in. You, know, you can trust me. Well, where can we find you online? What should we look out for? <laughs> Insta well, our Instagram, j.cohen.midlands. That's where you can find me on Instagram. I will be looking to open up more avenues, as I said, or well, we haven't said, but YouTube will be another avenue um, that's coming very, very, very soon. So look out for that. All I'll say is it's it's called J Cohen, the series. Eventually, I'll probably end up on TikTok and all the others because I'm realizing it's more about being seen, especially mm. brand-wise as well. There's mm. a lot of power in being seen and being heard. Mm. Um, I've been very quiet on a lot of things and realized it's it's not it's not changing my circumstance the more i've spoken out or the more i've done certain things for people to see the more recognition i seem to be getting so my understanding of it always is it's coming it's coming i'm going from being a person that likes to hide in a hole to someone that's peeking their head out now so it's it's coming watch this <laughs> watch this space it's coming it's coming yeah. it's coming but I'd like to say hopefully that we, we do more of these podcasts too so keep a look out for this podcast specifically because I'll be making appearances wherever I'm asked mm. also that's it mate make sure you stay tuned stay locked like comment share and subscribe thanks for watching to the end and remember Jay's got his code if you want anything from the DY nutrition range Jay Cohen DY 10 10% 10. 10 off everything on the website and Anything from the Gravity Fitness website, ABS 10, 10% off anything at the website. If you want to support yourself and support us at the same time, treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. Yeah? <laughs> Over and out. <laughs>